All right, so this is going to be a video on how to uh, set up OpenStack Liberty on CentOS uh, 7.2. Uh, I made a video on about this in the past um, using, I can't remember which one it is now, maybe Icehouse on Fedora 20, and that was a thing. Um, but now, uh, because of the pace that Fedora is moving and the pace at which OpenStack moves, uh, they've decided to not support Fedora anymore. So they recommend... Uh, to use EL-based packages on EL-based um, distributions. And that would be RHEL, uh, CentOS, Scientific Linux, things like that. Um, and that's just so that they've got uh, fewer testing targets to, to test against because OpenStack is huge and it's difficult enough to test against one, one stable release uh, versus one that comes out every six months like Fedora does. So... Um, I'm going to start out here with the, this, this is the RDO website, RDO project slash install slash quick start. And uh, this is how to get up and running with OpenStack in an all-in-one installation. You wouldn't really use this in production, but if you are just at home, you want, you have a box sitting around, you want to do, spin up virtual machines easily. This is a great way to do it. This is what I use it for in my uh, test and development environment. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, there's actually some things that you need to do before you start here, and I'm going to go, go over those real quick. Um, so right now I'm logged into the machine that I'm going to install um, OpenStack on. You can see uh, here it. Um, let me see. That it's CentOS uh, seven two. Um, I've already run yum update on this, so it, that version of the kernel might be ahead of the one that you install. If you install a base CentOS 7.2 install, just do a yum update, you'll get that kernel or better. Um, and I just did that ahead of time, uh, not to hide anything, but just because that takes a long time and I didn't want to uh, hang up the demo doing a system-wide yum update. Uh, so some things are still the same. Uh, OpenStack prefers uh, that you not use Network Manager or FirewallD because it uses IP tables and FirewallD and IP tables aren't going to play nice together. Uh, and the net and Network Manager tends to do things dynamically to the uh, network adapters that uh, OpenStack isn't aware of and they get confused and they clash too. And so you should really just use the basic network script. So I'm going to do that here. So system control disable network manager and firewall D all right and I'm going to enable network which is like the simplest of the network configurations uh, system control um, and also uh, SE Linux like they get getting the SE Linux policy stable for OpenStack. There's just so many files and so many processes actually accessing so many different things that, that it's very difficult to get an SE Linux profile that works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that because I don't have time to mess with it. Yes, Dan Walsh is crying. I'm sorry, Dan, um, but got to get going. Uh, the last thing that you want to make sure of is uh, that you can resolve this machine's host name. So, um, yeah, host name control. You, you need so this. You know, this is my my local DNS this is my host name here, and when I do a ping, knock, it works. Um, that's because this name is registered with my bind DNS server here locally on my network. Uh, if you don't have access over your uh, DNS server on your network, then you need to add entries to your uh, Etsy host file here. So something like uh, this and uh, NEC and nut.net. That's, what, that's what's uh, acceptable for my network. Um, you'll want to do, you know, this is the short name, this is a fully qualified domain name, and then this is the IP address that is bound to your network adapter here. So it needs to be able to resolve. That's very important. If you run uh, the Paxac installer, which we're going to do later, and it can't resolve the name, you're going to get all kinds of weird errors. So don't do that. Uh, make sure you can resolve the name of the machine. I'm going to take that out since that has the potential to mess me up. Um, so once we do all that, we are going to uh, do a reboot. 
and we're going to reboot a couple of times here just to make sure that the changes that we make are persistent and don't, uh, you know, uh, can span across reboots. Because if you do it live and you get it running and you get, you know, a couple of virtual machines running up on it and then you have a power outage or something like that, then it doesn't come back up normally because something you did along the chain wasn't persistent. This is a good way to check to make sure that what the changes that you're making are persistent. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for this to come back up. Usually it boots pretty quickly. And then from here, we can start the, the RDO uh, quick start. That's, that's kind of where that picks up. So that is back up and we can log in. All right, so let's go back to the quick start here. So we're gonna go into this Etsy environment and uh, copy and paste whenever you can to avoid typos. And we are gonna grab contents here and put them in the file here. Whoops, insert mode, there we go. All right, then the next step is to install the RDO release RPM here. I'm already root, so I'm going to not include sudo there. Uh, this is really nice to do as root. Uh, having to type in sudo all the time is a mess. Uh, so again, we're not talking high security here. We're not talking about production. We're talking about having fun being roots. OK. <laughs> um, so I've already run this yum update. I'll go ahead and run just to show that uh, my packages are up to date. Well, look at that. All right, looks like there was an update between in the last 20 minutes. All right, then we're gonna install OpenStack Packstack, which Packstack, uh, if you're not familiar, is a set of Puppet scripts that will set up your OpenStack environment. There's lots of pieces to OpenStack, lots of different possible configurations. And this tries to simplify that whole thing and uh, abstract away as much of that complexity as it can. So we will do that. And as you can see, it installs quite a few packages. But this is the main one, the OpenStack puppet modules. And then there's things for Python and Ruby that it needs. All right. Then we are going to Come up here. We're not going to do this pack stack all in one right away because the all in one actually installs more than I like. Um, you can control pack, what pack stack does uh, using what's called an answers file. So I'll show you how to do that right now. You do pack stack gen answer file equals answer.txt. What that will do is it creates this answer.txt file here. You know, whatever you passed in is this argument. And you can go in here. And there are a ton of variables that you can change about the install process. As you can see, it's quite extensive. Um, we're just going to change uh, these first few, what, what main components get installed. So um, we need MariaDB. Uh, uh, all the components use MariaDB as the backend database. Uh, Glance is the image store. We need that. Uh, we're not going to do sender this time. Uh, Nova's compute, we need that. Uh, Neutron is the network, we need that. Horizon's the web dashboard, we want that. Swift is the object store, I don't typically install that. Solometer, I don't care about metering. Uh, I don't care about telemetry. I don't care about metering as a service. Um, eat, no, trove, no, ironic, no. And Nagios, no. All right. So that's the last one. Um, so save that file. And now what you can do is pack stack um, answer file equals answer.txt. And that'll use your, your options in the installation. Now, uh, this is going to be hopefully the only cut in this demo. This takes a long time. I think on my machine it takes about eight minutes. So it just takes a little while. So I'll be back in a bit. OK, so uh, now that's finished. Uh, you can see done, done, done. You see all this stuff, you, you know, Nova, Neutron, uh, Horizon, all those things that we put in the answers file to be configured. So here at the end, there's some important stuff. Um, yeah, time synchronization. This is important. So if you look in here, let me clear up here. This file here, if you cat this file, 
um, this is your admin user and it's, this is the password that it's generated. You're going to need that later to log into the Horizon dashboard. So the, what we need to do here before we can access the dashboard and start going crazy with uh, OpenStack is we need to configure the networking. And networking is the big dread of setting up OpenStack. Neutron is nuts. It has all kinds of plugins. It's got all different ways of setting it up. And therefore, PackStack does, uh, can, it can't safely do very much networking uh, on its own as part of the installation process. And so if we go in here, it's done a few things. Um, it set up the open V switch system and the external bridge and the internal bridge and then the tunnel bridge. Um, and if we use the OVS commands, um, we can see some information about them here. So uh, what we need to do uh, in order for our instances in OpenStack to get access to the outside network um, they need to, so in this case, it's an all-in-one. This is the internal bridge. Um, and if you uh, were going to have another machine in your OpenStack network, then you would need to configure this inter internal bridge also to bind it to an interface so that it can communicate with instances on other physical machines. Since we don't have another physical machine, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to just do it for the external bridge. So what we need to do is we need to put our actual NIC on this bridge. And you can do that using the, the if config scripts um, in under Etsy sysconfig. So that's what I'm going to show right now. If we go Etsy sysconfig network scripts. We need to create a new um, if config for the uh, open v switch external bridge. So if config. And this, you know, BREX is the name of that interface that it created. Um, so I've got this saved off to the side. I'm going to paste it in real quick and then explain it. Um, so what I've got here is the name, the device. So the device type is OVS. The type is OVS bridge. Um, I don't have it configured for IPv6. And all this information is basically copied from my existing um, NIC configuration. This is the here is the static IP address. Forgot to mention that you want a static IP address for this machine. Um, if it's DHCP, then you can change it just by um, in boot proto here. Say boot proto no, and uh, rather than DHCP, and then add IP adder prefix gateway. All this information that it would normally get automatically from DHCP. Um, so the external bridge is now going to have our static IP address. And then we're going to make our network adapter a port on this bridge. So we save that. And then we're going to go into the if config for our actual adapter. And um, you can see here that this looks very familiar. This is the configuration we just put into the external bridge stuff, right? Um, but now we need to change this configuration so that this is a port on that bridge. Um, so I've got that over here. Paste that in. Okay, so uh, name and device stay the same. This is device type OVS, just like the bridge. But instead of an OVS bridge, this is an OVS port. And all you got to do is say which bridge, OVS bridge, this is a port on. And that is all you have to do for the physical uh, network adapter configuration. So we're going to save that. All right, and then we're, we're gonna do another reboot here to make sure that our um, network settings were correct. Uh, you, might, you might wanna have physical access to the machine when you do this, because if you did something wrong, then you, it won't be accessible over the network. So uh, we're just gonna roll the dice here and go for it. And that is pretty much the, the simplest network configuration you can do with Neutron. Um, looks like it's going down. Hang on just a second. And uh, like I said, neut Neutron can be very complex, but it, but it doesn't have to be in the, um, the all-in-one situation. And so... Um, 
it took me a long time to figure out what the what the simplest way to do it was. Okay, so sorry about that cut there. I got bit by a drag cut bug. I'll link that in the description below if you want to work around for that. Basically, it caused an infinite loop in my reboot sequence. So that was fun. Um, so our uh, it's back up. And if we look at our uh, conf network configuration here, you'll see that the static IP address is now on the OVS external bridge and that our uh, actual, you know, the, the, the real network adapter doesn't have um, an IP address configured on it. If we do OVS BS control show, we can see that our interface is now a port on the bridge. And that's the, that's the configuration we want. And we can, you know, we can show that we've got external network connectivity here. And uh, this is a good check just to make sure that you're, you're routing out so that your gateway settings are right and that your DNS settings are right if you can resolve a name and then route out and then ping it. Um, so now uh, we are ready to go into the graphical interface for OpenStack. So let's see if this works. It does, awesome. All right. So now what we need to do is come back here and cat this keystone admin. And this is the password that we're going to use to log into the web console. So I'm going to put that there, admin. And we're in. All right. So uh, Packstack sets up a cup, a, a lot of stuff for you um, that, that doesn't come, you know, right out of the box with um, with OpenStack. It sets up networks, routers, flavors, projects, users. Um, I like to kind of clear it out as much as I can, just so that uh, I, I can rebuild things from scratch for things that work for me. And uh, especially then the networks and the routers are, are not going to have the proper settings for your network. So I'm um, going to start out. We're going to this demo user. I don't use it. So I'm gonna, or, or this is a project Spain. I don't use the demo project. We're logged into the admin project right now. You can see up here is your list of projects. I'm logged in as the admin user. And so I'm in the admin project and I'm not going to log in as the demo user. So we're just going to delete that project and the user. The other thing I like to do is change the password on the admin user. That way I don't have to go back, keep going back to my Keystone admin file. So just change that to something that you can remember. And when you do that, you have to re-log in because your credentials changed and I can't type. All right. So that's taken care of. Uh, in the admin pane, you'll see things that are kind of global to your OpenStack instance. So we're just going to go through here and clear some of this stuff out. Uh, there's a def there's a router that it creates by default. We're going to blow that away. Then we're going to go to the networks and blow them away. Images. Cirrus. Good for nothing. Get rid of that. Flavors. You know, depending on the size of your box, I mean, some of these things are larger than the OpenStack box itself, probably. So uh, I just blow all them away and replace it with a default that's uh, appropriate for the box that I'm running on. Um, instances, we're not going to have any of that. Okay. So what we need to go back and do now is create the public network. And this is going to be the network that you uh, pull your floating IPs from. And the floating IPs are going to be appropriate for you know, the LAN that the OpenStack box is connected to. And so this is not going to be some virtual private network. This is the actual external network. Um, so we're going to create this. We're going to call it public. Uh, I assign it to admin since that's the only uh, project that I'm, I have access to. And then here, this is all kind of, uh, you know, voodoo for an all in one. But I, the one that I found works is VXLAN, and you set the segment ID, segmentation ID to zero. This gets stripped off uh, on the external bridge when it sends it out through the uh, port anyway by OVS. So it really doesn't matter. Um, and then I make it shared in case for some reason you wanted to create another project and a uh, mark it as an external net network. That comes into play when you create a router later. Uh, so we'll do that. 
All right, and then we click on the network name here, and we are gonna create a subnet. Now this subnet is uh, going to be a subnet that is appropriate on your on your LAN. So I'm gonna call it public subnet, and the one my LAN is this. So, so this is CIDR notation of your uh, network address, right? So uh, the first three octets, and it's a slash 24, so zero in the end there. Uh, the gateway for my network is that. And here we, uh, so my network has a DHCP server on it already. I don't need an enable DHCP, uh, but I do need to provide it with a block of IPs that's outside the scope of the network's DHCP uh, server block. Um, that way, the floating IPs that you assign your instances aren't going to collide with something that the DHCP server on the LAN is going to assign. So I'm going to, this is a block that is outside my LAN's DHCP server. I'll do that. Uh, use the DNS server on my LAN and create. All right. So now our public network is set up. Um, the next thing we need to do is create a default flavor. I actually call mine default. For this machine, it's a NUC. It's got four cores and eight gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna say uh, they could use all four uh, vCPUs and uh, let's do with two, gig two gigs of RAM. Um, and then the root disk, 10. I wouldn't go below 10. A lot of images out there assume 10 is kind of the minimum. If you set this any less, uh, some images that you pull down uh, might not work. So I, I recommend 10 gigs. All right, so we've created our flavor. Now let's go into our project and uh, set up some things that are project local. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is come in here and set up our private network. So you can see our public one here and actually from within the project view, we don't have any access to change this since this is something that's, that's created by the admin, the, the OpenStack admin. Um, but we can create a private network for this project. So I'm gonna call this private, highly original. Um, we're gonna create a subnet at the same time, private subnet. And this, can, this is gonna be your, your virtual IP addresses. These are the ones that are actually gonna get assigned to the interfaces on your instances, um, but aren't routable outside the cloud. So we're going to go with uh, that, since that's what I'm used to, um, 12.1, okay? So this gateway IP address, you'll see where it comes in when we create our router. Um, but that IP address, keep that in mind, and we're going to go next. Okay, we do want to enable DHCP on this network because we need something to assign IP addresses to our instances when they come up. Um, and we need to create an allocation pool. I like uh, one is the gateway, so I'm starting at two and going to say 20. Uh, the name server, the instances can reach the external network uh, even without floating IP addresses. So I'm going to put in the name server on my LAN and then create. All right, so now we got the two subnets. Now we need to create a router to route between them. So we can create a router, call it router. And then here's where that external network flag came in. Only networks that have that external network flag checked appear in this list. There's our public one. Um, so that's going to be our that's going to be our gateway network. And uh, if we now we've created the router, we click on the name and the interfaces tab, and we want to add an interface on this router to uh, from our prob, our sorry private subnet. So we're going to add an interface private. And this is where we're gonna stick. This router is gonna be the gateway for this uh, private network. Okay, so now we've got two interfaces here, one coming in from the private subnet and then one uh, that's actually a port on the external bridge that can reach the outside network. And if we go to this network topology tab, you can see kind of a visual representation of what that looks like. So we have our public network here with the LAN appropriate network. We've got our router with two interfaces uh, and it actually has uh, an, an IP address appropriate for the outside network as well as to the router. And then here we've got our private subnet. 
So now we've done that, uh, we can go into the compute. We need to set up some access, uh, some security groups and key pairs. So if we're going to manage rules here, uh, egress it allows anything the instances can send anything out on any port um, but right now they uh, are restricted on on the ingress side um, because i like to just spin up instances and those instances can be ha having services run on any port i don't like making specific you know a rule every time i do that so again this is not high security i'm just gonna let everything in um, if it's got a floating ip address assigned to it any port on any protocol it'll get through so we're going to delete the ingress rules uh, that come prepackaged, and then we are going to create like all permissive. So this is this is kind of a little. Uh, there's not a all protocols. You can say other protocol, in which case it doesn't ask you what the protocol is, and you can leave this blank. Um, and then this is the cider for all addresses. So we can just do that, and I'll let in all IPv4 traffic, and then we do that again. Other protocol. But instead, use the all IPv6. That's colon colon forward slash zero. That's CIDR notation for all IPv6 addresses. And then, so now we can all traffic in and out is allowed. We go back to access and security, key pairs. Um, you can create a key pair. I've got one that I'm going to use already. Um, so you can do that. I'm going to drop down here, get a terminal, cat. Grab my public key here, and then we will come back up here, put it in, import. Okay, so that this pre-shared SSH key is going to be what you know, how we how we get into the instances. And if you've done cloud computing before, you're familiar with this. This is how much how almost all clouds work. They don't they don't allow you to set passwords or login as root or anything like that. Uh, yeah. No login is root regardless, and then there's a you know unprivileged cloud user in the instance uh, that they pack, you know bake into the image that you can log in as, and this pre-shared key is loaded into that user. So uh, let's get an image. Um, we blew away the Cirrus one. Um, I'm just going to show you how to add one just for completeness here. I've got the CentOS uh, generic cloud images. This is the URL here. I'm just going to pull down the latest one in QCOW2 compressed format. That's what that is there. So we're going to copy that. And you don't have to download the image locally to your machine. You can provide a URL. So, and that's controlled by this image location here. If you say image file, then it gives you a choose file and you can choose from your hard drive. But if you do location, then you can provide it with just a URL and it will pull that URL straight in, pull that image straight in a glance. Um, I typically use what they provide there. And then in the format, ucal2. All right, so now create image. And that will download it and, and import it into Glance. Hopefully this won't take too long. There we go. All right, so I think we are ready to go now. We can actually launch an instance. So we're gonna go hit launch, give it a name. You'll notice that this has changed in Liberty. This I, just a few days ago, I installed Kilo, and uh, and when I set up for this demo, the Liberty packages had landed. So this is this is different. Uh, this has changed a lot from Kilo, the launch instance dialog here. So uh, we go to source. Source has been pre-selected because we hit launch from the image um, the image selector here. If you did, if you were in the instance pane and said start new image, you'd have to select which image from. Uh, flavor, default, it's the only one we've got. Networks, private, you don't add the public. The public is floating IPs, that's a different thing. You'll see it here in just a second. Uh, network ports, we don't have any. Security group, default, key pair, add your key pair, and then launch instance. This is a change in Liberty that I've really liked. This used to automatically switch you to the instances pane, uh, but it, now it keeps you on images. If you want to see the instance launch, you go to instances. You can see it spawning here. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit this button. Ah, I just disappeared. Well, there you go. It shows you right here. We're going to go ahead and associate a floating IP address with it. Okay. We haven't assigned uh, we haven't assigned any floating IP addresses to this project yet. But you can just hit here on the plus sign. Say, give me an IP address from the public pool. And there it is. And then we can create the mapping there. So now we've got 
this floating IP assigned to this instance. We go in here, we can see how far into the boot up process it's gotten here. Uh, so you see the prompt here, uh, cloud init has run here. So the host name and IP address should be set. Our pre-shared key just got loaded here. So we should be good to log into this machine. So let's give it a try. SSH and uh, for CentOS, the unprivileged user that's baked into the image is CentOS. And then we're gonna do our floating IP address here. And we're there. We've got a running instance. It has external network connectivity. If we do ping Google, well, if I can type. So there you go, you can log in, you can install software, you can do whatever you want, you can blow it away, you can create three more just like it, and it's great. Hopefully this was useful, catch you in the next one.